Hi readers, welcome back to the channel. I'm S.M. Cornthwaite, the author of the Hollow Scrams book series and Jack the Ripper, the man behind the blade. Uh, all three of these are available now on Amazon. You have Hollow Scrams Day of the Dolls, Hollow Scrams Ghost House, uh, which are for ch children uh, six and up, and then Jack the Ripper, the man behind the blade, which is a true crime story. Um, <clears throat> My own personal theory of who I believe Jack the Ripper was, uh, available on Amazon. So without further ado, let's get this started. So, went to Barnes & Noble the other day and picked out a bunch of really great books. A few of them I had to order online. Two of them, because I forgot that it was a four book series, I uh, ended up getting one and three. Uh... So I ended up having to order two and four. Uh, and then I have another book on the way, which I'll talk a little bit about here, here shortly. Uh, the first book I picked up was House of Shadows by Darcy Coates. Uh, Darcy Coates is by far my favorite author. I started reading this through Kindle Unlimited, but I'm more of a physical copy guy. So while I was at Barnes & Noble, I picked this up, started reading it. I've got the uh, sequel to this, House of Secrets, is on its way. It should be here today or tomorrow. She'll never escape its shadow. Sophie's world is shattered when disaster bankrupts her family. She's still reeling when she's offered an unexpected solution. Mr. Argenton, a wealthy stranger, has asked for her hand in marriage. Marrying Mr. Argenton will save her family, but it condemns Sophie to a life in Northwood, a vast and unnaturally dark mansion situated hours from civilization. Still, she has no choice but to accept the offer and hope the darkness won't swallow her whole. It's a struggle to adjust to her new position as mistress over the desolate house. Mr. Argenton's relatives are cold, and the manor is more than it seems. Doors slam, inhuman figures slink through the surrounding forest. A piano plays itself in the middle of the night. Blood drips a macabre warning down the walls. Day by day, Sophie is inevitably pulled toward the terrifying truth. Northwood's ancient halls are haunted. And the man she married, the man she's coming to love, is hiding an unforgivable truth about his ancestral home and the spirits that now haunt them both. This is available for $14.99 through Barnes & Noble, Amazon, other bookstores. Uh, Darcy Coates is a USA Today best-selling author. Uh, <clears throat> a little bit about her. Darcy Coates is the USA Today best-selling author of Hunted, The Haunting of Ashburn House, Craven Manor, and more than a dozen other horror and suspense titles. She lives on the central coast of Australia with her family, cats, and a garden full of herbs and vegetables. Darcy loves forests, especially old growth forests, where the trees dwarf anyone who steps between them. Wherever she lives, she tries to have a mountain range close by. Uh, as I've said, uh, Darcy is my favorite author so far. Uh, I started reading her books with The Haunting of Ashburn, I listened to the Hunted audiobook, uh, The Haunting of Craven Manor. Uh, so far, I've read most of her books, either read or listened to the audiobooks of most of her books, uh, and I really love them. So because of that, let me move these off to the side real quick. So because of that, I ended up getting uh, Voices in the Snow, also by Darcy Coates. This is part of the four-book collection. Let's see, I think it goes in this order here. I want to say. So we have Voices in the Snow. Claire remembers the cold. She remembers abandoned cars and children's toys littered across the road. She remembers dark shapes in the snow and a terror she can't explain. And then, nothing. When she wakes, aching and afraid in a stranger's gothic home, he tells her she was in an accident. He claims he saved her. Claire wants to leave, but a vicious snowstorm has blanketed the world in white, trapping them together 
and there's nothing she can do but wait. At least the stranger seems kind, but Claire doesn't know if she can trust him. He promised they were alone here. But she sees and hears things that convince her something else is creeping about the surrounding woods, watching, waiting. Between the claustrophobic storm and the inescapable sense of being hunted, Claire is on edge and increasingly certain of one thing. Her car crash wasn't an accident. Something is waiting for her to step out, to step outside the fragile safety of the house. Something monstrous, something unfeeling, something desperately hungry. Uh, this part, this is part of the Black Winter series. Um, it's four book collection, as I said, uh, all by Darcy Coates. I wonder if no. So unlike with House of Shadows, which was a two part book. Uh, House of Shadows and House of Secrets. House of Shadows ends with the first uh, two or three chapters of House of Secrets. Uh, however, the Black Winter novels do not end with the first couple chapters from the next book. So that's Black Winter number one, Voices in the Snow. And the synopsis of this, it reminds me a lot of Misery. Uh, maybe Misery meets, almost like Misery meets House of Shadows. Uh, that's kind of the feel I'm getting from the synopsis here. Then we've got Silence in the Shadows. Uh, the stark world has changed. Each passing day twists it further, pushing the surviving humans closer to the brink of extinction. But for the first time, there is hope. Claire and Duran have set their sights on returning home to Winterborn Hall. It's a daunting journey, but vital. Humanity needs more refugees, or more refuge, safe areas where food can be grown without attracting the attention of the hollow ones, and the old Gothic manor in their best is their best bet. But their home is no longer a sanctuary; it's become a trap, carefully crafted for them, lying in wait for their return. By the time they realize just how dangerous Winterborn has become, it's already too late. The fight for survival is far from over. Okay, it actually looks like this, maybe the last one. This is number four. I forgot to look at the back here. Which the others don't have. But as you can see, you have Voices in the Snow, Secrets in the Dark, Whispers in the Mist, and then Silence in the Shadows would be number four. So let's go ahead and here's Secrets in the Dark. Also by Darcy Coates. You can't outrun the stillness. Winterborn Hall is not safe. Even as Claire and Duran scramble to secure the ancient building against ravenous hollow ones, they face something far worse. Claire's sister has made contact, but she's trapped and her oxygen is running out. Hundreds of miles separate Claire from Beth. The land between them is infested with monsters, and the roads are a maze of dead ends. Claire has to choose between making a journey she knows she might not survive, or staying safe in Winterborn and listening as her sister slowly suffocates. At least, whatever her choice, she'll have Duran by her side. And yet, there are eyes in the dark. There are whispers in the mist. There is danger lurking in the snow. And one false step could end it all. Once again, this is $14.99. You can find it at any major bookstore. And the back does have other books by Coates. Um, you have The Haunting of Ashburn House, The Haunting of Blackwood, uh, The Haunting of Rookward, The, the Carroll Haunt, uh, Craven Manor, The House Next Door, and then Voices in the Snow. Up next we have Whispers in the Mist. You won't survive the stillness. Claire and Duran may still be alive against all odds, but relief is only temporary. Duran is sick and rapidly worsening. Claire fears the only way to save him lies in the mysterious Evandale Research Institute, supposedly one of the few remaining human refugees. Refuges, sorry. But the research station is three days' journey away, and Claire isn't certain their small group can endure that long, because the danger they're facing comes not only from the ravenous hollow ones, but from each other. This terrible new world has left scars, and only some of them are physical. As Claire fights to protect the most precious people in her life, she begins to realize a horrible truth. 
not everyone can be saved. And sometimes the worst monsters wear a human smile. Give you guys a little insight here. Let's see. Whispers in the Mist is 467 pages. Uh, Silence in the Shadows is 395 pages. Uh, Secrets in the Dark, 484 pages. And Voices in the Snow, 342 pages. So imagine if this were one book. <laughs> one book called A Black Winter. That would, uh, I think that would give Stephen King a run for his money. But like I said, Darcy Coates has become my favorite author of all time. The, her writing is very, it really makes it easy for you to put yourself into the story. To visualize everything, scene by scene. Uh, to see in your mind's eye what's happening in the story. Uh, those Stephen King's books are really descriptive. It's not always easy to put yourself into the story and see what's going on with your mind's eye. Uh, with Darcy Coates, I find that it's almost like watching a movie, reading her books. A movie in your mind, you know. They're just something about them makes it really easy to grasp onto. Uh, I can usually go through one of her books uh, in about a day and a half, and that's not reading straight through. That's you know, taking breaks, it's, you know, only reading a few chapters or whatever at a time. If I were to read it straight through, I could probably get through, like, Voices in the Snow would probably take me about a day to read. Uh, so, yeah, really, really good writing. Uh, up next, uh, these next two were part of the half-off a table at Barnes & Noble. The first one is by Nathan Singer, In the Light of You. Uh, as I said, it is on the 50% off table. Uh, cover price is $16.99, so I ended up paying uh, about uh, $9.50 for it. So, uh, Angry Deceptive. Angry, disaffected 16-year-old Michael Fannin has just moved out of his poor Kentucky suburb to an even poorer black neighborhood in Ohio. Feeling like an outsider in a world he perceives to be pitted against him, Michael joins a gang of neo-Nazi skinheads for reasons that are not entirely clear to him at first. The gang's charismatic leader, Richard, takes him under his wing and Michael finds himself pulled into the wild fast-paced, and dangerous lifestyle of the white power underground. Emboldened by his newfound sense of belonging, Michael finds himself committing horrible acts of violence without a second thought. But two women threaten to tear his world apart, a passionate black activist named Nayani Shang, to whom Michael is secretly and desperately attracted, and Sherry Nichols, Richard's new girlfriend, whose presence serves to further destabilize this violent, volatile situation. These two fundamentally opposite yet eerily similar forces threaten to throw fuel on an already raging fire, promising a bloody and explosive end. But who will survive and who will be burned? Uh, Nathan Singer is a novelist, playwright, composer, and experimental performing artist. His published novels are the controversial and critically acclaimed A Prayer for Dawn, Chasing the Wolf, In the Light of You, The Song in the Squaw, uh, Transorbital, and Black Church Furnace. He currently lives in Cincinnati, Ohio, where he is working on a multitude of new projects. Uh, this one, the way... Th the way it's laid out, it almost seems like a young adult mo novel. Um, it doesn't look like your typical adult formatting. Uh, but still, it looks interesting nonetheless. It's 229 pages. Again, I found it at Barnes & Noble. Uh, cover price is $16.99. Uh, so I ended up paying... Uh, let's see... About eight fifty for it. Uh, the next one is another fifty percent off book from Barnes and Noble. 
It's The Overnight Guest by Heather Gudenkoff. A woman receives an unexpected visitor during a deadly snowstorm in this chilling thriller from New York Times best-selling author Heather Gudenkoff. She thought she was alone. True crime writer Wiley Lark doesn't mind being snowed in at the isolated farmhouse where she's retreated to where she's retreated to write her new book. A cozy fire, complete silence. It would be perfect if not for the fact that decades earlier at this very house two people were murdered, cold blood, and a girl disappeared without a trace. As the storm worsens, Wiley finds herself trapped inside the house, haunted by the secrets contained within its walls haunted by the secret by secrets of her own. When she discovers a small child in the snow, just outside, after bringing the child inside for warmth and safety, she begins to search for answers. But soon it becomes clear that the farmhouse isn't as isolated as she thought, and someone is willing to do anything to find them. Heather Gudenkoff is the critically acclaimed author of several novels, including the New York Times bestseller, The Weight of Silence, she lives in Iowa with her husband and children. And this is one of those where it's only like a... It's got part of the front cover clipped. And this is 348 pages that came out in 2017. Uh, up next is one I just got today. I ordered it through Barnes & Noble because they didn't have it in store. Um, but after reading... Steve Martin's Born Standing Up, which I'm going to try and review soon. Uh, it's been really busy with school. Uh, I decided I wanted to check out Martin Short's I Must Say My Life as a Humble Comedy Legend. Martin Short is an Emmy and Tony Award winning Canadian born actor and comic. Adored for his work on SCTV and Saturday Night Live, as well as in such acclaimed movies as Three Amigos, Father of the Bride, and Inherent Vice, not to mention dozens of memorable talk show primetime and the and theatrical appearances from TV's Damages to his one-man Broadway hit Martin Short fame becomes me. He lives in Pacific Palisades, California. Uh, my first introduction to Martin Short was via the character of Ed Grimley. That's how far back I go. Uh, I used to watch the Ed Grimley animated series on, I want to say it was on CBS, Saturday mornings. Something about it uh, really attracted me to it. I I enjoyed the character. I enjoyed watching him, I must say. But yeah, this, this is supposed to be an autobiographical account of Martin Short's life, just like the Steve Martin book behind me. Uh, I'll probably review them both together. So once I finish this, I'll I'll do back-to-back -back videos of this and the uh, Steve Martin one. And it does have uh, two separate image pages. Uh, you got a stack here, a grouping here, and a grouping here. Can't wait to read this. I think after I read House of Secrets, which I should be getting today or tomorrow, I think this is going to be the one I read. Uh, up next is a Barnes & Noble leather-bound uh, classic. It is Charles Dickens' Great Expectations. Now I return you, I return to this young fellow, and the communication I have got to make is that he has great expectations. Uh, I got this for $10 at Barnes & Noble. Uh, it is pretty pretty thick. Uh, I'm, I'm just in love with their leather-bound classics. Uh, they're so beautiful looking, so nice to hold, uh, the feel of them. Uh, this is 509 pages long. Uh, and I haven't really heard a whole lot. Uh, I mean, obviously I've heard of Greg's Great Expectations, but I have absolutely no clue what it's about. So... Um, yeah, I can't wait to uh, dive into this one. Uh, finally, I picked this up. A Goosebumps Collectible 10. Uh, it comes with five uh, reprints of the original copies of 
five Goosebumps stories. First, we have the Haunted Mask. Now, these are not numbered, like you'll see in some uh, a lot of the reprints. Um, once R.L. Stein got going on the Goosebumps series, he released them individually, and they didn't have the uh, couple chapters from the next book in the line uh, at the end when he originally released them. And then when he re-released it, uh, he numbered on the binding uh, which book it was in the series. Uh, these do not have the numberings. And it looks like this does not have... This does not have the couple chapters from the next book either. Uh, however, what it does have is... It looks like it has a chapter from uh, an autobiography of his at the end. So that's pretty cool. Uh, up next, we have... Welcome to Dead House. Uh, this also, it has an about the author. It has chapter one of The Blob That Ate Everyone. Sneak peek. Uh, then we have Say Cheese and Die, which is another good one. Uh, one Day at Horrorland and Night of the Living Dummy. So I'll go ahead and read. For those of you who have not read Goosebumps, or at least haven't read them in a while. I'm sure most people have read Goosebumps or know a little bit about them or watched the uh, TV show from Fox Kids, uh, which uh, R.L. Stein is um, beginning, getting ready to produce a new series, Goosebumps series for Disney Plus. Uh, they're working on it right now. It's actually going to, it's not going to be based on the books. It's going to be called Goosebumps, but there's supposed to be an overarching story uh, across the episodes. But the haunted mask, face to face with a nightmare. How ugly is Carly Beth's Halloween mask? It's so ugly that it almost scared her little brother to death. So terrifying that even her friends are totally freaked out by it. It's the best Halloween mask ever. It's everything Carly Beth hoped for, or hoped it would be, and more. Maybe too much more, because Halloween is almost over. And Carly Beth is still wearing that special mask. Reader beware, you're in for a scare. Uh, the cover art was by Tim Jacobus. Just like uh, most of the majority of the original Ghost Goosebumps books. Welcome to Dead House. Look alive. Amanda and Josh think this the old house they have just moved into is weird. Spooky, possibly haunted. And the town of Dark Falls is pretty strange too. But their parents don't believe them. You'll get used to it, they say. Go out and make some friend, some new friends. So Amanda and Josh do. But these new friends are not exactly what their parents had in mind. Because they want to be friends forever. Reader beware, you're in for a scare. Every picture tells a story. Greg thinks there is something wrong with the old camera he and his friends found. The photographs keep turning out wrong, very wrong, like the snapshot Greg took of his father's new car that shows it totaled, and then Greg's father is in a nasty wreck. But Greg's friends don't believe him. Sherry even makes Greg bring the camera to her birthday party and take her picture. Only Sherry's not in the photograph when it develops. Is Sherry about to be taken out of the picture permanently? Who is going to take the next fall for the evil camera? Reader beware, you're in for a scare. The next ride might be their last. The Morris family got lost trying to find Zoo Gardens theme park. But that's okay, they found another amusement park, amusement park instead. It's called Horrorland. In Horrorland, there are no crowds, no lines, and the admission is free. It seems like a pretty cool place. But that was before that heart-stopping ride on the Deadly Doom slide. And that terrifying experience in the House of Mirrors. Because there's something weird about the rides in Horrorland. Something a little too creepy. A little too real. Reader beware, you're in for a scare. He's no dummy. Lindy names the ventriloquist's dummy she finds Slappy. Slappy is kind of ugly, but he's a lot of fun. Lindy's having a great time learning to make Slappy move and talk. But Chris is jealous of all the attention her sister is getting. It's not fair. Why does Lindy always have all the luck? Chris decides to get a dummy of her own. 
She'll sow, Lindy. Then weird things begin to happen. Nasty things. Evil things. No way a dummy can be causing all the trouble. Or is he? Or is there? Reader beware. You're in for a scare. But I really like this tin, too. Uh, it's pressed. So the Goosebumps logo. You can feel it. You got the slime splatter logo on the back. Uh, on the top, on the lid, you have the Day of the Dumb or Night of the Living Dummy, uh, Say Cheese and Die, and the Haunted Mask. And then along the sides, you have the books, the cover of the books that are in this tin. So I put the books on my bookshelf and then I display this on top of my bookshelf. So, but anyway, that was this month's book haul. Uh, I would show you the House of Secrets, the sequel to House of Shadows, uh, but I'm waiting for it to be delivered. So, with that being said, I've been S.M. Cornthwaite. Take care, readers. <laughs>